Picture this. Arizona Desert, 1975. A group of loggers, end of their workday, and suddenly, bam, one of them vanishes. And not just vanishes, disappears after a weird light shows up in the sky. This is the Travis Walton abduction, or at least that's what people call it. And it's a case that never seems to fade away, does it? Yeah. It's got all the ingredients for a mystery that captures the imagination. And that's what we're diving into today. All the details, the evidence, what makes this story tick. We've got Beyond Belief right here, ready to unpack it all. But before we go full on sci-fi, let's set the scene. Who was this Travis Walton? And what was life like for these guys, these loggers, back then? Well, imagine. No cell phones, no internet. You're cut off from the world working in the Arizona wilderness. These were tough guys, a tight-knit group. They depended on each other out there. Which makes their stories, and how similar they all are, even more interesting, don't you think? The book mentions they weren't just co-workers, they were close. Like, their lives depended on each other out there. So that makes it even weirder, right? They all claim to see this UFO in broad daylight. But here's the thing. Walton, he doesn't just see it. He walks toward it. What's that all about? That is the million dollar question, isn't it? What would you do? It's fueled so many debates. Curiosity, fear. Some say maybe that light, that UFO, had some kind of hold on him. Beyond belief, gets into Walton's head a bit, tries to figure out what he was thinking, but it also looks at what his buddies saw, what they went through. Right, because they're watching this whole thing and they are freaked out. They take off thinking, we gotta get out of here. You can't blame them, can you? They probably thought Walton was done for. And that right there is where a weird event becomes a full-blown mystery. Because mm -hmm. Walton doesn't just pop up a few minutes later. The guy's gone. Five days. Five days. And nobody knows what happened. His friends, his family, they must have been going out of their minds. And that's when this local thing, the strange light in the desert, turns into a national story. And the cops, I mean, what were they supposed to think? Oh yeah, a bunch of loggers, they say their friend got zapped up by aliens. That's a hard sell. It really was. There was so much skepticism, people just didn't believe it. Beyond Belize talks about how the police thought maybe it was a cover-up, maybe even something bad had happened to Walton. Those other loggers, they were in a tough spot. Their friend's missing, and they're the ones who look guilty. Talk about a nightmare. But yeah. then, just as suddenly as he disappeared, Walton comes back, and he's different says he was taken, examined, you know, the whole alien abduction story. So what started as a missing person case now looks like maybe, just maybe, it's a real life close encounter. Exactly. But that's also where things get really controversial. Because Walton's story, as incredible as it sounds, it's met with, well, some people are amazed and others, they just don't buy it. Even the evidence, and we'll get into it, it's kind of convincing, but it also you can see it in different ways, like the polygraph tests Walton took when he came back. The book Beyond Belief, it talks about how he aced some of those tests, but others, not so much. And the questions that tripped him up really makes you think. It's like you hear a story like that, and it's hard to know what to believe, you know? It just makes you want more. What did the investigators find? Was there anything, anything at all to back up what Walton was saying, or was it just like his word against everyone else's? That's what's so fascinating about this case. We're not just talking about people saying they saw something, which, let's face it, memories can be tricky. Beyond Belief goes into some pretty interesting physical evidence, like the site itself, where it all happened. They found this area, the ground was pushed down like something heavy had been there, almost like a landing pad, if you believe that sort of thing. And get this, they picked up these strange electromagnetic readings in that exact same spot. Whoa, hold on. Okay, so we've got weird lights, a guy vanishes for five days, and now there's something weird with the ground, with the energy there. It's getting stranger and stranger. But what about Walton? He comes back after five days saying he was abducted. Did anyone examine him? Doctors? Anyone? They sure did. And this is where Beyond Belief really digs in. When Walton reappeared, he wasn't himself, physically, I mean. Dehydrated, confused, and he'd lost a ton of weight. But here's the thing. He was also showing signs of, like, extreme anxiety, you know, post-traumatic stress, like, like what someone might experience after, well, after something really messed them up. Okay, so we've got the physical stuff, the way he was acting. But there's also this whole thing about hypnosis in the book. Are you telling me they tried to use hypnosis to get Walton to remember the abduction? That's taking it to a whole other level. It does sound kind of far out, right? And back then, it was super controversial. People still debate it. But when they put Walton under... He started describing things, really specific details about these beings he claimed took him, what it looked like inside the craft, even the medical stuff they supposedly did to him. It was pretty wild. 
I bet that got people talking. So let me get this straight. You've got the other loggers saying they saw this UFO. You've got these weird marks on the ground. Walton's acting strange. Then under hypnosis, he spills all these details. What were people saying? How could they explain all this? Oh, you can imagine the theories. Everything from aliens, which let's be honest, was the most popular, to some really out there ideas. The alien abduction theory just made sense to a lot of people. <laughs> the details Walton gave under hypnosis, they were so vivid, and they kind of lined up with other abduction stories going around at the time. But of course, there were the skeptics. People who thought, yeah, right, a bunch of loggers saw a UFO. Sounds like a hoax to me. Exactly. Some folks figured it was a big prank. Maybe they wanted to be famous, or maybe they thought they could make some money off of it. And then there were others who went even further, saying Walton made the whole thing up, a publicity stunt to become like a UFO expert. Which, come on, people have tried that before. But beyond belief makes it clear that this whole thing really messed up their lives. Jobs, friends, they even got death threats. Doesn't sound worth it, even if you did get your 15 minutes of fame. You've got a point there. And it's something that makes the Travis Walton abduction so intriguing. If it was a hoax, it was a really bad one for the people involved. And the thing is, even now, all these years later, Walton still says it really happened. He's never backed down, even though people criticize him and question his story. It's like the more you big into this, the more questions you have. It's a real head scratcher. And that's the beauty of it, isn't it? The Travis Walton abduction just doesn't fit into a neat little box. It's a story that keeps you guessing, that makes you wonder what if. It really messes with your head, doesn't it? Trying to separate what you can prove from what feels true. That's what makes Beyond Belief so interesting. They don't try to make it easy for you? Nope. They lay it all out there. And I think that's why, even after all these years, the Travis Walton abduction is still such a big deal. It's a story that gets people talking, gets them thinking about what's out there. What if it really happened? I mean, really, what would that mean for us? Oh. Exactly. It makes you question everything. But even if you're not quite ready to say, OK, aliens took him, there's still a lot to learn from this case, right? Totally. The Walton case, it's like this huge example of how we try to make sense of things, of how easily we can be swayed and how our own opinions color everything. And think about Walton. Whether you believe him or not, his life was never the same. The book, it really makes you feel for the guy. Yeah. The things people said, the way they treated him, it's a lot to handle. Makes you think twice about how we treat people who say they've seen or experienced something truly strange, even if it challenges what we believe. It's a good reminder that there's always more than one side to every story and that the truth, well, sometimes it's hard to find. This deep dive has been fascinating, and honestly, I feel like we've only scratched the surface of this whole thing. We've only just begun. The Travis Walton abduction, it's a story that stays with you. More questions than answers, that's for sure. So as we wrap this up, I gotta ask you, after going through all of this, all the details, all the different sides, what's your takeaway from beyond belief? You know, it reminds me how important it is to be open-minded, especially when it comes to things we don't understand. It's easy to just brush it off and say, that's crazy, can't be true. But sometimes the biggest discoveries come from being willing to accept the unknown, from asking questions, even when we think we know the answers. Couldn't agree more. And who knows, maybe someday we'll finally know for sure what happened out there. But until then, stories like Travis Walton's, they remind us that there's still so much out there we don't know. The universe is a strange and wonderful place full of possibilities we can barely even imagine. You've heard the story, the evidence, the mystery that just won't quit. Now it's your turn. What do you believe happened that night in the Arizona desert?